So what's up, everybody? We have had a little hiatus from our podcast, which I've missed greatly. And I think um, there's a lesson in that as well that I just want to share with you guys before we started on today. And uh, I think as a business owner, when you have a, a side project or something you may personally be passionate about, um, if it doesn't fall in line with what's currently going on in the business, for example, um, if editing the podcast takes away from our core business, which actually produces income, which is actually shooting wedding videos and editing those videos, um, this has to go on the back burner for a little while. So uh, as sad as it was to put it away for a month, um, there were actually reasons to that. It's not that I didn't want to do it. It's that I needed everyone focused in on certain specific projects. So to business owners out there, if you see yourself drifting, um, you know, and you may be doing something that quote unquote is fun, but isn't a, a core baseline part of your business, those things need to come to a stop because ultimately what they're going to do is take focus away from from your core business which which is something that um you know i personally don't believe in so um the lesson in that is to you know stay the course and these things will come back around one time grants and then that that is now so um i think you know it was a good lesson for me to say hey we need to pivot right now um just to immediately catch up on what we have going on to make sure our clients are serviced correctly so with that being said um we have been crazy busy so sylvia was yeah. kind enough to jump in and uh interview me today really quickly so do you think, are we heading to an economic downturn? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, I'm not an economist by any means, but I think you don't have to be one to see what's going on. Um, we've had the most categorically amazing run from 08 um, at the low of the markets and in, in, in 09 up to 2020. Um, it has been the strong bull market in the history of the market. Um, and that being said, we've had this, you know, everyone's been flush with cash and the economy has been prospering and, and it really has been an unstoppable train for the past 11 years. And I've been saying this for the past year is we're closer to a downturn. We're closer to a correction than we are away from one at this point. Um, and as small business owners, we definitely feel that and when that comes. So for me, it's aligning my business strategically while things are good so that when things do downturn, which inevitably they always do, you know, as much as we always look forward to summer, winter comes, you know, and it's an unavoidable consequence of of our, our, our markets and it's natural. You know, you have to, uh, in essence, like if you have a brush fire, the fire's got to burn so new life can come back. And the same thing is true with economics. Um, markets need to correct themselves so that new growth can happen. Um, but while that new growth happens, a lot of death happens. So as business owners, uh, I think the first thing you need to do is, is multiple steps, but the most important thing is you need to look at your current spending. Um, I'm a big believer that most of us spend at least 20 to 25% per year on things that we don't necessarily need or things that don't impact our business in a way that we want them to. And, and that, for example, maybe um, if you buy your microphones from company A and the microphone's $500, well, it's very easily that you could probably find them somewhere else for 450 But you don't know unless you ask. And when we're flush with cash, we don't really look at those bottom line numbers. We just spend because the money's there. Um, but um, as Warren Buffett says, the way you run your business when things are good will be equally indicative of how you run your business when things are bad. So while things are still good, now's a great time to do some housekeeping. Um, and, you know, what does that look like? Um, you've had 10 great years and you're driving a Mercedes. Right? Maybe you don't need a Mercedes. Maybe it's time to swap to a Hyundai um, and you're saving $300 a month um, post-tax dollars, right? So that could be a savings of, let's say, $8,000 a year. Right. And if you apply that to multiple facets throughout the course of your business, what you're going to see is that bottom line number starts to grow greatly. Um, and that's something I did here, right? And, and what did that look like? Uh, my lease was up. I could have renewed it. Instead, I worked out a, a deal with my landlord where we moved to a slightly smaller space, but substantially less money per month. Um, instead of releasing a brand new car, I bought out the car I already had, um, and that keeps my payments lower per month um, instead of going out and buying something that's brand new. Um, I think a lot of times we fall in love with having the newest, coolest, fastest thing, and that's not no necessarily always something that behooves you. I mean, ultimately, it's four wheels that get you from point A to point B. Right. Um, so as, think, a, as a business, sorry to interrupt you, as a business no, no. owner, um, how does that feel? Like probably like downgrade a little bit like the space or just like I, I think you have to separate the two things and it's a great question is if to your ego, right? People people want to always look a certain way. Um, when you say fuck your ego and move all that aside, it feels great because at the bottom line, I'm a business owner and I'm driven by bottom line profits. So when I see my profits going up, um, I, that makes me happy, right? So having a fancy studio or having X, Y, and Z or driving the best car, those things only fulfill your 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 self worth through ego, right? right? They don't actually make you a better person. They make you feel better. It's very probably for a very short period of time right. you get this amazing endorphin rush. Um, I mean, there's a great interview with um, the cyclist um, Lance Armstrong, 
And at the height of his own personal downturn with the whole steroid scandal, he had had two private jets, four houses around the world. And as his lawsuit started piling in, he needed to dissolve his assets in order to pay those off. And he talks about how when he went down to no plans and one house, his life actually became a lot more simple. Um, he was able to spend more time with his family. He right. was able to actually focus in on things that are really important, being with his kids, taking them to school, and not worrying about what house manager he needs to hire or fire to run his five houses. Um, so a lot of the times we think more is better. And I, I think now is a great time to start living small because when the economy does downturn and corrects, whether that's a year from now or two years from now, if you're positioned your business in a way to ride that wave out, ultimately a lot of businesses are going to go out of business, right? So the, the Chinese proverb, China, um, opportunity and crisis are the same symbol, right? So through every crisis will be a golden opportunity. If you're positioned financially to ride that wave, and maybe that looks like revenue goes down for two years, but you're the business that stays those two years. So in 2024, you come out as the only one left in your field or one of a few left in your field. You've now positioned yourself to be in a much better place going forward versus people who are going to overspend over the next two years thinking that winter is never coming. And right. when it does hit, they're going to be screwed because now they have this Porsche lease, they have the fancy office and trying to unwind from all those things in an economic downturn. Like I saw in 08 and 09, a lot of my friends went bankrupt because they were living far above what they could afford at that point because 05, 06 and 07 were absolutely unbelievable. And I'm seeing the same thing now. Um, you know, luckily and fortunately for me, I have really good mentors who have made me look at these numbers, right? And, and what other numbers can we manage, right? If you're an owner of a business now, um, how much can you outsource, right? And that's really important, especially in high tax states like New York, New right. Jersey, and California. Yeah. The more labor you have, when you look at the uh, dollar cost average of that labor per hour with payroll tax and all those other things, if you can take that job X, whatever that may be, and outsource that to a third party where you're not responsible for that person's benefits, their well-being, all those things that go into what another company is, you've now alleviated the business of that stress. The other thing is if you can work it out where you're only paying them when those services are needed, now you're not in a contract where you have this fixed amount of labor per, per week. When things go down, now you have to cut labor. Um, whereas if you can position yourself to run your business the most efficiently with the least amount of people, um, which can be done, you know, in every business, there's 10% fat off the top. So if you have 10 employees, if you, if you fire your 10th worst, your, your worst employee, your 10th person down the line, your business isn't going to change because that Correct. person actually takes more away than they actually bring Correct. to the business. Yeah. Um, and if you apply that rule, the 80, 20 rule, um, across the board and you trim that 20% bottom fat off everything, it's amazing what you can see happen. That's great. Yeah. And I know you've lived through it. So, you know, and I think from your own personal perspective, um, you lived through a socialist upheaval and you saw what that did to your country's economy. You oh, know? Yeah. And you saw, I mean, that's the worst case scenario. And I don't think that the United States is headed in that direction as much hoopla as there is right now about, about all that. Um, we are a capitalist society. I don't think that will happen here. And I, I think, think there's too much structure here. Yeah. Um, but that being said, the reality is you go from one day having everything to and then like one day, just nothing. nothing. Yeah. So, you know, the other day I was looking at something um, about the poverty line here in the U.S. And yeah. it was something that I didn't know. Yeah. And I really like to know about a few things here that I, I have yeah. no idea. And I forgot her name, but she was a, uh, she's a teacher. Mm -hmm. She was in, she's, I think she's from West Virginia. And she was talking about the poverty line in the country yeah. and how, um, I think she was talking about a coworker or a manager of, of, of on a store that they gave her a, a raise and a new position and she lost all the benefits. Yeah. So, and I found that fascinating. Yeah. It's like you are, she was saying that I have a job like Monday through Friday and then I work on the weekends yeah. and I still don't have the benefits because I have to pay insurance because I have to pay this or, and that for me was like, so the poverty line here, it's 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 brutal. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's been a greater disparity between the the, the top percentage of the country and the bottom percentage of the country. And um, I mean, unfortunately, right now, success in this country is being bashed upon, um, and the American dream is being bastardized, um, saying that you know capitalism is evil and people who run their own businesses right. and, and 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 in essence um, garner their journey to to the way they want it. It's being demonized right now. And I don't think that's necessarily the answer is, is to demonize people who've become successful because that's why um, out of all the countries in the world, people are still trying to get into the United States it's because it's the only country in the world where you can actually make something for yourself. And, and we've, we've, we, we do need some solutions uh, to manage healthcare costs and, and some of the issues we have. Um, 
you know, and without getting political and my own political beliefs, et cetera, um, you know, I think that that is those are problems this country is faced with for sure. Um, but from a business perspective, I think it goes into your own household perspective, too. You don't need to be a business owner when you're listening to this and say, um, you know, you may be not making as much money, but then you go out and buy a flat screen TV. And right. that's the American consumer mentality, which is put it on a credit card. So much. So now you bought a $500 TV, which you can't pay for at 28% interest per year. That TV at the end of the day wound up costing you $3,000 because you're never going to pay the interest back right. on the credit card. Um, and that's a fundamental issue with Americans right now is the chronic overspending and the chronic addiction to our debt that we have. Um, and it's a mindset here. It's a mindset and it's it's constantly buying things. You know, and Amazon's only made that worse. And, and, and at the end of the day, um, the easiest thing to do is stop going on Amazon and buying stupid shit you don't need, um, but also really not having credit card debt. And that that will be the death of a lot of these businesses is because they're going to take on high interest debt and ultimately, um, you know, paying a credit card at 30% is no different than being a gambler in debt to the mob. You know, instead of them breaking your knees, they just foreclose on your credit cards, your business, all those things. So um, either way, it works out as a bad ending, you know. Um, so I think that's another thing you really need to be prudent about going into the next couple of years is having no debt. And I, not, I don't say no debt, but no bad debt. But no bad, yeah. Um, high student loans, um, horrible, right? And, you know, that's something this country's fallen in love with is sending our kids to these ridiculously overpriced private universities so that they can think these, you know, it, it, it just, yeah. for me, it's... Um, you know, to go talk about ideas. Well, that's a beautiful concept. It's not worth $300,000. Um, it's also not ruining your financial future. Um, and that gets into, you know, how do we educate our children better on economics in this country so that they don't wind up in these positions or limit access to capital to uh, go to these schools, right? Go to a state school, go to a city right. school. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it all falls back into the same mentality. I have to go to the best school and drive the best car, which is bullshit. Because if you get into a junior college and transfer to a four-year university in this country, only people look at where your diploma came from, not where you started. It's exactly. where you end up. Um, you know, we're not India. There's not a class system put forth here. Um, it's self-imposed class system here. Um, so I think, you know, in leaving, I know we have to run because we have a meeting to get to, and I appreciate you doing this with me. Um, I think going forward, like I said, winter's closer than summer is. Um, and at this point, you need to be prepared for winter. Uh, and, you know, like a squirrel, you need to put a lot of those acorns in the ground so that when winter does come, you are best prepared to ride that winter out. Cool. I That's think, a, yeah, I mean, I always learn. I don't know anything about economy <laughs> or this country, about, but this is always like I, conversations with you are uh, always like. Well, I appreciate That's you great. doing this with me. And uh, we'll be back with more of these. Uh, they're going to run around 15 minutes. Sylvia's going to be doing with me. And uh, in essence, what we've done is pivoted from having uh, longer term guest ones right now um, while we are busy to uh, Sylvia and I are going to shoot the shit once a week for 15 minutes, keep up with some really good ways to manage your small business, which is my thing. And uh, I hope it brings you guys value. So without, uh, without any further rambling, uh, Sylvia and I are out, headed to a meeting, and we will be back next week. Thank you so much.